from the second episode of the Film Nerd Podcast. I'm your host, Vince. Today, I have a guest with me. If you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Same guest as the first time. If you listened, it's uh, me, John Horford. <laughs> so, John was on last time when we had episode one. Uh, we talked about a couple films. One that he recommended, we talked about Avengers Infinity War, and he recommended Nosferatu, the 1922 silent film. So, today, I recommended two horror films for him. Uh, he had been wanting to see a couple horror films and asked me for some recommendations. So I recommended to him to go see Hereditary, and then I told him to go watch The Witch. And the reason, oh, first of all, heavy spoilers for both films. So if you have not seen them and you don't want them spoiled, make sure you know we're going to be talking spoilers. All the spoilers. All the spoilers. <laughs> uh, so Hereditary is out right now. The Witch came out three years ago in 2015. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about why I recommended these two films together, but I want to first talk about Hereditary before we get into The Witch. So let's talk about Hereditary. So Hereditary is an A24 film. If you don't know what A24 is, they're an independent distribution and production studio that has been putting out some of the best independent films in the last couple of years. Films like Moonlight and Room, The Witch, uh, uh, It Comes at Night... Uh, I could keep going on. There's a whole bunch of good ones. They also were the, the studio behind Spring Breakers, if you've seen that one. With I have Jim, not. With James Franco. That's an A24 I film. I have not. Uh, so Hereditary <laughs> is the dire directorial debut, written and directed by Ari Aster. He has not done anything other than a couple shorts previously. Um, so the film is about a family. And I don't really want to get into too much detail before we start talking about it. Because um, I want to break down a few specific things. But generally, what the, the film starts off with the grandmother in the family. She, is dying, she has just died, and they're having her wake, and the mother is speaking about her grandma. And as the film goes on, there's some other tragedies, which a couple I really want to talk about, that happen, and then it all comes to an absolutely nuts conclusion at the end. Um, so basically, it's a, it's a family tragedy that turns into a nightmare horror film. Um, so what did you think about it, John? Did you like it? You uh, saw it, what, three weeks ago? Uh, two yeah. weeks ago? Yeah, it was about like two or three weeks ago. What would you think? I, I really liked it. I, I feel like the end failed it, though. I, I really do. Hmm. And we obviously we'll get to the end, but I, I think they, it got a little cheesy. Like, they, it was going well for a while. And then it's just, they just, when people start floating... Let's, let's talk about the end a little bit later. So, <laughs> did you, so you liked the movie up until the end. I did. I did. enjoyed it. I didn't think it was like terrifying, but I thought really? it was a good. No, I didn't. I want. I wanted to be scared. <laughs> I wanted to be scared so badly. I just wasn't. So for me, I don't see movies twice in theaters ever. Never. I think the last one I went to see twice was. I know I saw Force Awakens twice. I might have seen The Last Jedi twice. I'm a huge Star Wars guy. Otherwise, I never go to the theaters twice. I saw this movie twice in four days. I remember. I, and the first time I went alone, and I was petrified from start to finish. I was like huddled, like with my elbows on my knees, with my mouth in my hands, on the edge of my seat, like looking side to side because I was in a row all by myself. Oh. Um, I think that might have been. It might have been because you were I alone was, in a row by so, yourself. Four days later, three days later, I saw it again with a few friends. And I was just as scared shitless no again. No yes, Dude, I thought it was better the second time. So, for me, and I talked about this on the last episode, for me, what is most terrifying when I go see movies is something that could actually happen. You know, some you know realistic horror. And to me, so the first thing I want to talk about is that scene. So there's a scene. This movie takes a huge pivotal turn. This was, for me, the first truly terrifying moment of the film. And it's the film when the daughter, so once again, spoilers if you haven't yeah. seen this movie, this is like monumental to the entirety of the film. So when the, you know, when the brother's driving back for the yes. party and she, and so in the film, she's the brother's a, driving back for the party, she's having an allergic reaction to nuts and she sticks her head out the window to try and help herself breathe, get some more air. He swerves the car because something runs out on the road and there's a light post and she's decapitated by it. That scene, when that happened, I was just floored. I was like, "What the hell is going on?" Yeah, I could like. It's it's early in the film. Oh, too. I know. I think it's it, early. It's the, like it's the end of the first act. 
So most films, you know, are a three act structure. Yeah. That's the end of the first act of the movie, right yeah. there, and it's like boom, yeah. like it's a whole different movie from that point yeah. on. It's a whole different movie. Yeah, but you think she's gonna be like the whole time because she's so creepy. She's so creepy. The, yeah, what's her name? The little again? girl. I don't yeah, remember. No, I saw. I saw the movie about six or seven weeks ago. She's unbelievably creepy, and I feel oh, so I like I, I don't know if they made her look even creepier or they found a girl who just looked that creepy and well, scary. I think so. I had looked it up, and that actress, she, um, I think it was her first major film. She's only the actress is only like twelve or thirteen. Yeah, she's very young. I thought she was incredible. That, yeah, that she, actress she, who plays the little girl. Oh, she's incredibly creepy. So this is bugging me right now because I can't remember. I like I said, I watched it about five or six weeks ago. So I thought she was incredibly creepy, and then her being decapitated and progressing the movie along. So the actress's name is Millie Shapiro. Is the actress plays the little girl, Charlie. Charlie, Charlie. So I remember yes. she had a boy. She had a traditionally boy's name. Which so, you find out that there's like there's a reason for like all of it. Yes. Like so. Before we get to the end, because I that's like one of the last things I want to talk about is the end of this film. Because like, it yeah. sounds like John's not happy with it. I love the ending. I really like the ending. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is one of the reasons when I went back and watched it a second time that I liked it even more. So did you went you saw it once, right? Yes. Did you pick up some of the things? That were hidden in frame. That if you weren't looking closely, I mean, you I, might not I, have picked up. I'm not sure what you're talking about specifically. Okay, so specifically, here's one that happened early on in the movie. So when the brother is driving to the party yeah. with Charlie in the back seat, did you notice the camera stops on the light post as the car went by? No. Do you remember that? Heck no. So I didn't the car that. flew by. Yeah. The camera stopped. It was following the car and stopped on that light post. It's, you know, foreshadowing. Yeah. But if you look closely, it's very quick. Like, it's kept in frame for only a moment. On the light post, that same symbol that was on the grandmother's necklace mm. and was on the book is on the light post. Yeah. Really? Yes. Wow, it's like, no. It's, like, stamped into yes. the light post. I did not notice that at all. I noticed it the second time. Yeah. I didn't notice it the first time yeah. I watched because it, it was so fast. Yeah. And another thing that... Um, I noticed the second time, there was a few, and I'll probably forget, but one I definitely remember at the end of the movie, which I want to talk about later, but I will mention yeah. this real quick, is at the very end, when he's in his bedroom, he wakes up, the son, yeah. played by Alex Wolf, uh, Peter, when Peter wakes up, did you notice what was, did, could you see it up in the top corner yes, of the screen? Yes, yes, yeah. That one was a little bit more yeah. obvious, but I love That one was obvious. But that, but that was, and that was oh, part, brilliant. that's when I started that's getting, brilliant. that's when I started getting pissed off. I was what? like, why? It was already creepy enough. Like, when she was just, like, because throughout the film, like, she, like, sleep, the well, mom sleepwalks. Yeah. So, she was already in his room being super creepy. They they talk about um, what she did when they were younger. Oh, when she, yeah. So when she discusses her dream. Of, yes. Or, no, not a dream. When she... She actually she did it. She and dumped lighter fluid yes, all Yes, on them, all, all of them. them. Yeah. And herself. Yeah, and was lighting the match. And literally had a lit up. match yeah. in her hand. Yes. It so that's already creepy. it's already creepy enough and then she like um like he's having a dream like and she's like right in his face like that's creepy enough but then like to have her up in the dark but like, it was the reason I, I liked it is because it's not in your face because the way so he frames the camera and it's perfectly centered on the room and everything behind Peter's dark and I like I don't know if you noticed this but it took my eyes in the theater a second to adjust to see it it wasn't really visible right away. It's like your eyes, because it was so See. hidden in the shadows, and you're sitting there, and you're looking like, why is Aster keeping the frame like this? Like, yeah. what is he trying to show? Because yeah. a really good director will let the camera linger on a scene with purpose. Like, yeah. there's a reason he's they're doing what they're doing. Why he's putting this in frame. Why he has it framed this way. And so I'm like, what is, what's the point of this? Why is it such a wide frame? And it took me a second, and then your eyes adjust. You see his mom... <laughs> She's like up, but you can't even see her face. That's yeah, why I love you can't. it. Like you just you can see part of her legs, and really only because she was wearing a white yes, nightgown. Yes, I was gonna say that because she's really always wearing she's her. always wearing the white nightgown at night. Had so you, then that's how you can tell it's her. Yeah, had, yes. she, had she been wearing something dark? Yeah, you, you can't see the face. Just seen her hands yeah. or feet because you couldn't see her face. Yeah, you at can't all. see the face at all. And then and then the other thing I liked about it was there's no music. That whole scene is mm, no music. Just it's silent. silent. It was yeah. dead quiet. I loved that. That's another thing I loved about this movie was the music. Yeah, no, I mean the soundtrack is creepy as hell. Like I said, it's a good movie. It's a creepy movie, but I just didn't feel terrified at any point. Really? There are a couple points where like I like jumped a little bit. 
There are a couple. Like when when she's when the mom started chasing him, like yeah. when like uh, when she comes out. So she's then. So as the film progresses, so I guess we can start talking about the end. So at the end, <laughs> did, we, did well, we just the skip ending, the whole film and go well, to the end? I don't know. <laughs> Well, let's hold on a little bit longer because I did want to talk about a couple more things. I know because the ending is a huge talking point. It is. It really so, is. But then after, so let's go back. So we we're talking about Charlie. So the scene after Charlie is decapitated. The movie for me was like a monumental shift. And that scene to me alone was the scariest part of the movie. Like, And that was another thing that was so brilliant. I can't wait to see what this guy does next. But it was another part that was so brilliant in terms of the direction, what he, how he used the camera. Because what he did is when she's decapitated, he doesn't show it. He shows Peter, and it just sits on his face. As he, like, the horror of him realizing, he knows. He doesn't even have to turn around. He's, he knows because he saw in the yes. rearview mirror his sister going out the window, yes. and he heard it, and she's quiet. And, so we just he knows. To, and we just have to watch him process watch, that. Watch him, and I have never seen, so I know um, uh, it's um, Peter or Alex Wolf who is in the Naked Brothers Band. He was one of the twins from the Naked Brothers Band on Nickelodeon. Oh, really? Yeah, that's one of them. I had never seen him in a movie before. I don't, yeah. not that I can remember. I'd have to look up, but I thought he was incredible, especially that scene. Like the way he was, it just seemed so real. Yeah. Because if you're a brother and you, you know, you're already terrified for your sister that she's gonna die because she's suffocating because yeah. her throat's closing from her allergic reaction, and then you just accidentally decapitate her on the way to the hospital, yeah. like. I how do you I don't think you can process something like that. And that's what and I loved he, about what he did next. And he doesn't process but it. But that's what I loved because it seems so real. He should go to prison. Or not no, okay. And he, even if he doesn't go to prison, like he goes home, he gets into bed. He's in shock. But that's what I loved about it. I get it, I, but like dude. I, I don't think either of us could realistically like put ourselves no, we and can't. think about we what's can't. that like we accidentally decapitate our sibling yeah. on the way to the hospital. Yeah. And that shock and that horror. And that's to me it just seemed it seemed very real. I know as an audience member, like a couple of the friends I was with the second time I saw it were like, why aren't you going to the hospital? Like, what are you doing? Cause he just drives home. He just drives home, goes up to bed and he lays awake, cry, yeah. like silently crying and in shock yeah. all night. He doesn't, then, he doesn't call the police. He, he doesn't, doesn't do tell, he doesn't tell his parents. He, he doesn't, exactly. Because, well, cause think about it. He knows she's dead. He yeah. killed her. She's dead. And I think he doesn't want to accept the reality of what he did. Yeah. So he was waiting. I think that that's what seems so real is think about when you were little and you did something really, really bad. Obviously, you never accidentally killed, decapitated when you said yeah. when you did something really, really bad. Then you want to you wanted to prolong that inevitable moment of being in trouble as long as you could. But now imagine doing something like this and you're in shock. You know, you're, you're horrified at what yeah. you did. And to me, it just seems so real because he just doesn't want to accept the reality of what he did. So yeah. he's going to hold on to that fantasy as long as he can that he didn't do it. Yeah. And then what I loved about that was Ari Aster never took him out of frame. Because then he went to bed and the camera stays on his face. And this was the moment that to me was one of the most chilling moments of the film and one of the most terrifying. Is he has the camera on his face as he's laying there in bed crying silently. And you hear the, and this is another thing is the sound design. Mm, the sound is yeah, incredible. I know what you're about to you say. can hear yeah. his mom and dad's his mom saying, I'm going into I'm going to shop or whatever, I'm going to the grocery store. And you can hear the door of the front house close, or you can hear her walk to the door, the house, the door close and her go outside. And then all of a sudden you just hear scream. Like blood curdling yeah. scream. And you and that's another part when Alex Wolf's his reaction, like it like jolts him into crying even more like he has a quick like, yeah. gasp as he hears uh, his mom and it's like shit that's it uh, now my fantasy is over it's and different it's, it's there yeah. but then then the next part is then he shows the head do you remember that yeah so it's focused on him crying and it stays there for a little bit as you can hear his mom screaming and then it cuts to his sister's head Out, covered outside outside yes. in the hot sun covered in ants yes that like that shocked me to the core. Like I was like, I jolted back in my seat. I was like, Oh my God. Uh, and then it cuts to her just two scenes in a row of her crying at when they were lowering the coffin into the ground. And yeah. then she's the, the other part that was great was Tony Collette was incredible during that whole scene. Cause then she's on the floor in her bedroom, just screaming, I want to die. I want to die. And you know, her husband's holding her. I was like, Oh my God. Uh, like to me, that's terrifying. That's scary. Cause like I put myself there and like, could you imagine? 
like that L- side of a family yeah. tragedy. Because at this, at the core, this film up to that point and even into the second act mostly is a family tragedy. And you got this kind of thing hanging over the the second act from the first act with the grandmother. Yeah. So if you've seen this movie at the beginning, it opens up with the grandmother dying and. Uh, Tony Collette's character, the mother of the family, going through some of her stuff, and she kind of finds some weird that you suspect look kind of like cultish things, and later on you find out, yeah, no. her grandma's part of a cult, uh, which is where this where the film gets its supernatural element. So up until and through the death of the daughter, this film is just a family tragedy, and to me that's terrifying in and of itself. No, or seems to be, and then you find out that everything is like it's it's, yeah, it's for it's, a reason. It's, yeah, it's like planned. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's that's an interesting thing that you said that because I've read some people have been saying was everything <clears throat> planned the grandmother's death, the daughter's death because that's another thing. The light, like I said, if you catch that scene, I'd I'd recommend watching it again because yeah. there's some little things. Not definitely. And one watching of them again. is the light post with that symbol because if if you see in the movie, the grandma wears this necklace that the daughter or the mother of the family she gets. Um, and that same symbol then from the necklace is also on a book in the yeah. grandmother's collection of and books and things. And it's stamped on the light post where the daughter, the, the granddaughter or the youngest girl in the family, Charlie, is decapitated. Yeah. So did the cult plan this all out that was supposed to happen? I think it's I, I think it's safe to say that it's I all planned out. I think it is because then it out. culminates to yeah. the ending. Oh. I'm trying to think of everything else I want to talk about. Otherwise, we can go to the ending. There's no way we can go to the ending already. There's okay. some other stuff. I know. Well, so then another thing I want to mention that, that to me made this movie so terrifying, not only Ari Aster's direction, the way he you know frames some things, and then the family tragedy, and the way he shows us this tragedy, because I think the presentation is really a big part of what makes the movie so scary, but the music. So the, the guy who did the music for the movie, his name is Colin Stetson. Um, and he... I, I remember looking, I think he's been involved with some, you know, some projects, like some bands and stuff, but I think he does a lot of his own work on his own. I think he, from what I remember reading, he had just started getting into doing some film work, and what I had heard and read is he does some unusual thing, uh, unusual things in the studio to create weird musical sounds. Hmm. So do you remember the soundtrack? Yes. Very haunting. Yeah, no, it was, super creepy. Yes. Yeah. So I downloaded Apple Music. I've been listening. Oh, of course Dude, you I did. Listened, yes, I listened to it when I was, I was doing some work for some of my online classes. Uh, I was listening to it. It's like, gets your heart racing. You're sitting there like, yeah. um, from what I read, he would take like, he did something like, um, did you ever hear with The Dark Knight, what Hans Zimmer did with The Dark Knight to create that sound when the Joker comes on screen? Mm-hmm. He took a razor blade and ran over a guitar string. That's that. Yeah. When the dark, when the, yeah, when the Joker comes. So what I wear, what he did, Colin Stetson, he does some stuff with violin strings, kind of similar. Like would take a microphone and like try to capture, put it running like different things, like a razor blade of stuff against a violin string, yeah. and the sound and capture that sound just from from some very unusual things. No. Yeah. But. If it was for this movie, it definitely created some very haunt, and I think that haunting score definitely helps set that really creepy mood, like that skin crawling, like what the hell's gonna happen kind of mood. Yeah. Did you feel that way too? With the no, I, I did. I did. What the other thing that really, really creeped me out was um, other like, than the daughter, like you said. Uh, the, yeah, the daughter. <laughs> dude, you, you have creepy. to you have to look up a, a picture of her. No, I like she's no just to the people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah to the saying, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you haven't seen her, the actress. Not trying to be mean, but it might also be maybe the way that she portrays herself in the film. Yeah. Maybe normally she doesn't look that way, but I, that's what I was wondering. I wasn't sure. I said, yeah. Uh, so the actress is Millie Shapiro, and she plays the youngest girl, Charlie, and she she was a pretty uh, she's pretty terrifying. Like yeah. I don't know, even before she dies in the movie, yeah. she does some things that are really creepy, and I don't. I don't know if it was intentional, but no, she's like when she takes the bird's head yes. and cuts off a bird, and she's sitting in the classroom, and a bird runs into the window early in the film, yeah. and all the kids freak out, and she just kind of turns and looks, and then goes downstairs at recess, and, and then she's she, she takes before she cuts it cuts. though, she's eating and just staring at it. Yeah, she's just eating and staring there at this bizarre. dead bird, and then she pulls out some scissors, scissors, cuts its head off, puts it in a bag, takes it home, and she has like. She makes these creepy like, art projects. But it's like yeah. what her mom does. Uh-huh. Except it's creepier. Creepier. Because her mom... 
So that's another interesting aspect about the film is the models her mom's made. Yes. So and that kind of ties into the... Do you remember the opening shot of the film? Remember not, the not very spe- was, opening shot? Not specific. Was the it a camera, model? So it was one long take. The camera starts outside and goes into the house, into her workroom, yeah. and kind of spins around the entire room so you can see all the models, and then zooms into one model and it turns into Peter's bedroom. Mm. Remember that? And, his fa- and the father's waking him up to, let's go to Grandma's funeral. Do you remember that? No. The only thing I remember, dude, the only thing I remember about the models is the model that weirded me out so much, and then you understood it later, was the grandmother insisted that she breastfed Charlie. Mm-hmm. Like, one, I don't know how that works, because she wouldn't be, she, she wouldn't be lactating. Wait, the grandma, she breastfed Charlie? Yes. Did you not know? Do you notice that? I guess I don't remember. You have to. You that. have to look. She's in bed. I want to watch. I love this movie. Yeah, I want to watch it again. So it's like a. It's like I don't know if it's a hospital bed that she's in or, but she's in a bed and the grandma's standing next to the bed with her tit out and putting Charlie up to it. But you can clearly oh, I tell that model. That was the yes. Oh that was the God. grandma. Yes. See, that's why there's so many things in this movie I want to I want to watch again for stuff like that. Oh my like, God. so bizarre. Like, that's part of the creepiness. Like, why did she, like, you know, why would she insist that? And obviously there's a reason for it because she was, you know. That's creepy. But then those models. So another interesting thing the director did was every scene you saw that took place in an interior was on a set. Anything outside was on location. Mm-hmm. Everything inside and... The reason they did that was because they wanted to make the interior, um, the interior rooms. They wanted to make them look like models. Mm-hmm. So every single scene you saw inside, the, I was reading all the walls were removable, so they could keep the whole room like that opening shot, keep the entire room in frame, so you can see everything. And that goes back to one of those things. Every time when I went and saw it the second time, I'm like trying. I was like frantically looking around, <laughs> trying to pick out stuff, and I did. I caught some things I didn't see the first time, yeah. which I thought was awesome. When directors do that, they, without showing you, you got to do, do some work yourself. They hide some things in plain sight that just kind of add to the film, and it gives it a really high rewatch value because then you want to go back and see again, like what did yeah, I miss? Yeah. What can I find? Adds, well, then it adds more to the movie. Yeah. You know, it maybe explains something that you didn't understand before. Yeah. But yeah, so we kind of were talking a little bit about the music and the models there, but both of those yeah. things really added to the film. And then, uh, d- did you want to talk about when she's going to like the group therapy, and how the grandma's like friend, oh, yeah. like like basically like follows her into like therapy and acts like she's just another person who's grieving. I know it was like it's a, it's like a grief therapy group therapy, oh, and dude, I just I knew from like as soon as. As soon as she showed up, like you just knew something was I know something was off. Even the first time I saw it before you find out her true intentions. Yeah. She just like something when she's, about her seems off. She's the, leaving. You know what the Oh yeah, she's, she's leaving, leaving. She cuts and, her off. Yeah, and she just shows up. Car, she's yeah. just right there yeah. and it's like, like The part that really because I was suspicious <laughs> when she was talking to her because I just thought I got a weird vibe from that actress, like the way she portrayed the character. I was like, this is weird. But the moment I knew something was off was the second she went to her home the and carpet. saw the, 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 yeah, yeah, the, the rug. welcome yeah, mat yes. that had her name on it. Because yes. I remembered when when uh, Tony Collette's character, the mom she plays, was going through her mom's stuff, the grandma's stuff. I remember her pulling out a, uh, a welcome mat that looked like it. I'm like, yeah. oh my God. And then exactly. she, she goes back later and yeah. she finds them again. And then you're like, oh man. And then she looks through the pictures and... And she starts to see that. Oh, that the, the pictures were creepy. And, dude, so they have creepy. like these images of the the cult that's uh, that's really bizarre. Um, cult of payment. Yeah, payment. <laughs> Hail, Hail payment. So I texted. <laughs> so I texted John. I texted John. Or no, 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 no. John texted me. So I told John to go see this movie so we could uh, talk about it for this episode. And uh, John texted me H. Did you text me HP? Or no, no, I said, I said hail payment. You said hail payment. You texted me hail payment. In all caps, though. Yes. And I went, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That, that was creepy. Should we, go to, should we go to the end? Yeah, I mean, we can. I mean. If you have more you want to talk about, I'll. I'll I mean. Yeah. yeah I mean, it a little it, more fresh. I'm trying, yeah. I'm trying to stay here because I watched it it's, about five or six weeks It just ago. depends. Like, okay, so, I mean, she tries to. So, the we have to talk about how the mom's friend starts with the summoning. Right? How the gra- or the grandma's friend. The grandma's friend goes to um, the mom, Tony, and it's just like, oh, 
you have to try this. Like I was able to connect with my loved ones. Oh like, my gosh, yeah. you know, and so she, that, well, and that I felt like was, was that the first moment in the film where it get, got truly supernatural Yes. or had, well, well, had they had any visions before that? Cause I remember, I don't remember when the visions started. Were they before or after that? Because remember, um, Peter starts waking up at night and he, remember he see, he hears a, yes, here's the, yes, he does. And then the, the, the rocking chair in the corner of his room is moving. He says, Charlie, and then the scene ended. Yeah. Was that before or after? I think it was before. It might've been before. I can't so, remember. There's a few, but so then, but you're not sure. As an audience, you're thinking, okay, is he seeing things? Is it in his head? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it so, a dream? Yeah. Is he like, seeing things? Is it in his head? Is he seeing? Is it a dream? The first, I think that was the first true moment. Of the film, you're like, okay, now we're going in a supernatural direction. We move from family tragedy to supernatural. So yeah. she goes, so she goes to her mother's the Tony Collette's character, the mother of the family, her mom or the grandma of the family, that <laughs> the friend of her mother. Takes her. I know. I'm trying to figure out how to explain it. No, no, no. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Trying. Takes her to her home after running into her in the parking lot and says, "Because she, her, her, the the grandmother's friend claims that she went to a um a uh, uh, what do you call it? A medium. A medium like a a seance or whatever. Was like watching it happen, and she, they helped her contact her grandson. Yes, I think it was." And so she brings Tony Collette's character, the mother of the family, over to her house and shows her this. Yeah. And that's the true, cause, and then as an audience, you see, okay, this isn't anyone's head, this is happening. Yeah. So now it's gone to supernatural. Yeah. What did you think about that scene? I thought they, it was done pretty well. It was. They had some creepy music in it. No, she did a great job because, I mean, she she related to her on like an emotional level. Like she, the grandma's friend like bought in completely. She was like tearing up. She oh, was yeah. like, it was so beautiful. Like yeah. I was able to contact my grandson. Oh, but they were just in terms of convincing. Yes. Yeah. They were just, she was tricking her the whole time. Yeah. Like, cause it was just a, it was, that was literally the summoning ritual. So she was teaching her that. So she could go to her house oh, God, and do it because that. the grandma yeah. was in the, okay. So another, I mean, obviously we're going to keep spoilers. connected because now we're into the second half of the film. We're going to have to talk. About yes. The so she teaches her how to do the summoning yeah. ritual. And then she says, you have to go to your house and do it there. And the whole time the grandma's in the attic. So the grandma's in the attic and then they do the summoning ritual in the house. And that ends up like summoning payment. payment. And oh, dude, you're making some connections. I didn't even think about that's right. And so she taught, and she taught Tony Collette's character the words yes. to bring payment. And didn't the words yes. have payment Dude, in it? I don't Did know if the words I don't know if they had payment in it, but it was a language yes. she didn't know. And yes. she asked her, What language is this? And she goes, I don't know. The seance taught to me. Yes. And she was just lying. Yes. Oh my god. She tricked yeah, her the whole right. time. Like it was all like I wasn't even make I didn't make that question. Yes. Yeah. So she she secretly taught her the <laughs> the words and what she needed to do to summon Payment. Yeah. And it had to be in the house for some reason. And the grandma had to be in the attic. Her body got dug up. And the husband didn't. It happened early in the film. Yeah. And the husband didn't tell her because she didn't want her to be upset. But no one ever found the body. And the body was in their attic the whole time. So that body needed to be there for some reason. So I feel like it's all part of the, the ritual. Like I feel yeah, like she I might have to. sacrificed I herself. I think it has something to do with like... it. I wonder if it has something to do with it being... Well... It maybe it didn't have to be in the house, but it just makes the most sense in terms of what they're doing because that's their home. Yeah. That's where they're going to be. Yeah. But I feel like they wouldn't put the, they wouldn't dig up the body and put it in the attic unless there was a reason. Like it I needed... think that is the reason. Mm. Don't you think? Yeah. Because that's where they live. Yeah. So I mean, if they're going to do the summoning to reach what she thought she was doing to reach her daughter, yeah. she's going to do it at home. Yeah. So it makes the most sense, I feel yeah. like, that but, you know she would go home, do yeah. it there. So that's why I'm assuming the cult dug up her body and put it in the attic yeah. without them knowing. Dude, the call. It's creepy as <laughs> hell. Oh my gosh. So let's kind of go back though. Let's keep connecting the dots until we get to the end here because I this is something that I've been thinking about after I'd seen it. Um, so then, after she summons what she... So Tony Collette's character, the mother of the family, she thinks she's summoning her daughter. But I think... I think she is summoning her daughter, but at the same time, well, her daughter. So payment. I think payment is in her mom's body, right? The grandma's body, right? Possibly. I mean, I feel like 
Payman needs a male Payman, host. That's right. Payman needs a male host. Payman needs a male host. Oh, 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 I think I just got it. Okay. They had only had daughters. They had only had daughters In up to family. that point until Tony Collette's character, the mother of the family, had a son. Yes. But, so, they had to get Payman, find a way to get Payman in his body. Yeah. But, like, the rulers of this cult, they're women. Hmm. So, they need to get Payman in a male, because, so, Payman was never in any of their bodies. There's more, there, wait, so there's... Payman was, I don't think he was ever in any of their bodies. There's, there's a little bit more to it, I feel like, though, because the daughter, okay, so when she had the son, like, she wouldn't let the mom anywhere near him, and then... When she had the daughter, the mom insisted on being part of every part of the kid's life. Mm -hmm. Like raised. Like yeah, the kid was that. like, I want grandma. Where's grandma? I want grandma. Breastfed the kid, even though she can't so breastfeed. Weird. Like she was <laughs> she was raising she had it's like you had to raise the child. I feel up. like she could breastfeed him because of payment. Like something with the call. Devil's yeah. devil's milk. Yeah. Like oh, dude, God. but like it Maybe needed, that's why she was creepy. Exactly. Or otherwise they would have just gone straight to using the the boy. But he wasn't he wasn't the right host. But she was. Because she was so fucking creepy and, like, she was like a psychopath. Like, a sociopath, psychopath. Well, I also think it was, because the, so Tony Collette's character, the mother of this family, she, and she's estranged. When the film starts and her mom yes. dies, she was estranged from her mother. They did not talk. They kind of, she goes into it a little bit in the film where they were not really on talking terms, and then they were on talking terms, and they weren't again. She talks about it at one point. They didn't have a good relationship. So maybe... Maybe the grandma was just waiting to influence one of her grandkids because she knew her daughter and her, she was a lost cause at that point, you know, because they just weren't on good terms. Yeah. And so she was just waiting and waiting and waiting for a younger host for their cult for payment. Yeah. And so then she, you know, was close with her granddaughter. They were very close. Yeah. So I'm, there, I'm telling you, there's something there because they make a point of saying, I like, on, I think we're pretty pretty good yeah. i think we're pretty close to it because it, it, they make a point of saying like um tony collette's character makes a point of saying like yeah um she was not part of my son's life at all and then she like refused to like be away from my daughter at all like she was like a part of like her upbringing like every step of the way i remember that like she makes a specific point seems, of saying well, that. and she was kind of she was un she seemed uneasy about it like she's not happy Cause she didn't. She doesn't like her mom. Yeah. Her and her, her, and her mom aren't in a good relationship. Oh. So when her mom, you know, takes her daughter under her wing, grandmother and granddaughter, it's kind of. I don't think she's happy about it. Yeah. And it ends up being not a good thing. So. Yeah, your, your 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 feelings are right the whole time. <laughs> I feel like there's a little bit more to it, but I, I think, think so I think too. that's got to be it. So I mean, her grandmother obviously is you know she's the leader of this cult. She dies. They need a new leader. They need a new leader. And it's not going to... Oh, I think that's part of it, though. So they need a new leader for this cult. And that's where the word hereditary comes in. So that's, they want to stay in this family. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the daughter. Because she hates her mom. She doesn't want anything to do with it. So it's got to be the granddaughter. It's going to be Charlie's character. Because they're on good terms. Yeah. But they got to find a way... My thing is, then why couldn't it have just been the son? Because I think they want... I think it, it has... Hmm. Because I feel like, remember, because it goes back to what you're saying about how she seems so creepy, about how Charlie seems so creepy. Yeah. I think it's because. But the grandma raised her, so I mean, that's I feel what I'm like. Saying, but the, I think she's already. She brought her versed. up to be the host. I think she's versed in the cult already. Because remember, she's making mm. these creepy arts and crafts. She yeah. loves her grandma. She's very involved with all that weird stuff, and she's 13 years old. Yeah. So I feel like she's there. She's already a part of it. And she also. As bizarre and creepy as that daughter is, I think she's a very strong character for being 13 years old. She just seems very emboldened and independent because she was she didn't have any friends. She was always doing things on her own, you know, you know, yeah. making things, wandering off, you know, things like yeah. that. I thought that, and then the way she acted at the party, like how she was like so scared to be alone and stuff at the party. I mean, that was very much like a child, you know. Yeah, yeah. I like, just I feel like you know, and the son's weak because it. It's in character. He's weak. I mean, yeah. when he's when he accidentally kills his sister, he's too much of a coward to accept it. Yeah, it's tough though because the mom's also already like really mean to the kid. Like they yeah. they have a, they have a horrible relationship. Like her and her son have a horrible relationship. Yeah, Freaking dream she has, and she tells him. Remember that one? She goes, "I wish you were never born." Oh yeah, mouth. yeah. And she, he goes, "What?" He goes, "She does she say I tried to kill you? I tried to kill you." And he goes, "How?" 
She goes, any way I could find. <laughs> yeah. No. So I, I think the son, I just, I feel like there's too much there for the son. He's not the proper host. Yeah. For. Yeah. So it ends up being the daughter. I think but then the only thing I'm confused about, so now I guess we kind of get into the ending. So let, let's start with the ending. So I like the ending. It doesn't sound like John likes the ending. So at the ending of the film, which I thought the ending was absolutely terrifying, the, the ending to me starts. So the, the son, played by Alex Wolf, Peter, he's at school. And I also love how they portrayed payment or the demon. It was like that light, the moving yes, light. Yes, so yes. he's in class and he sees the light going around. And then all of a sudden he like gets hit by it and he turns, he like contorts his yes. body into the image of what Payman looked like in the book that they showed the audience earlier in the movie. When, when Tony Collette's character is looking through her mother's things and she, they, op she opens the cult. That book was creepy. She opens the cult and she's reading some of it. And he like contorts his body into the image of Payman and starts slamming his head on the table. That part was freaky as hell. That, that part was creepy. It was creepy as hell. He starts Super slamming creepy. his head, and all of a sudden he comes to me and he starts screaming. Yeah, and just bawling he, his yeah, eyes he out. Yeah, and he busted yeah. his nose. Yeah. So his dad comes and picks him up and takes him home. Takes him home. Put He goes to bed. He's all drugged up, and he passes out. While the son's passed out is when all, everything goes to hell. And it gets really creepy, because that's when... Um, um, she, the, the Tony Collette's character, she tries to burn the the drawing, uh, Charlie, her daughter's coloring book. Because she, so at this point in the film, she'd seen a bunch yeah. of weird, creepy shit after she had tried to summon Charlie. Yes. And she thinks it's because of that, that token, which her token for her daughter was the coloring book or the scrapbook. Yeah, her, her drawing book. Yeah, her drawing yes. book, which is her connection to the dead yeah. with Charlie. So she tries burning it, and it burns her. Yes. So she takes it out. And she tells her husband to try and burn it, and he lights up in flames yes. and dies. Yes. So at this point, and then after he dies... Wait, no. She does it because she thinks it's going to kill her. You remember, she doesn't. She doesn't have the husband do it. She throws it into the he fire. He won't do it. He, yes. Well, she wants him to do it. Yes. He refuses, and then she hurls it into the fire. Yes. And he, goes and up. he dies. Yeah. Yes. And then she stand. Was that the moment? <clears throat> then she stand there. All of a sudden, she like goes rigid, and you're like, oh, she's possessed. Yeah. 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 And then so then that's where the end comes in. So then he wake. Then the next scene is Peter wakes up, and, and she, that was the scene she, John and I were talking about earlier. She's. Yes. The the camera. I, I love that scene. Yeah. Because there's no music. It's dead quiet. The camera is framed on the entire room with Peter's bed at the far left end of the frame and it's all dark behind him as you sit there the camera lingers on him for like it's like 30 seconds it's a long take and it's just sitting there and Peter's kind of sitting on the edge of his bed and he kind of starts going mom dad because it's dead quiet and all of a sudden I remember in the theater as my eyes started to adjust then all of a sudden you see his mom up on the ceiling in the high far corner in the ceiling of the room yeah. just like hovering and you're like oh fuck attached to the wall yeah and that's like your first <laughs> thought you're like holy shit yeah. and then and then the camera when it finally cuts it cuts to behind Peter's shoulder with a shot of the door frame and you see her like Crawl. crawling I know. through that's what the I hated. air out of the door you didn't like that? no that's what I hated it was so creepy it was so creepy before that and then it just got it was almost I, I See, so I'm dumb. glad you're kind of saying this because this has been a point of contention. I feel like with audiences with this movie because I've some people like myself. I think it's absolutely terrifying. I think it's great. Some people thought some of the things at the ending were comical. Dude, I they laughed. I'm not gonna lie. I busted Did out you? laughing in the theater because it was just, dude. Okay, when she, at, like when she started like floating up into the treehouse. See, I didn't think it was funny. I thought it was creepy. I was like, what? I the? know. I heard other people thought that was funny. I'm like, I, I was thought like, it was creepy. It looked. Really? There's just a there's a better way. I think there's a you know what was you know what was like. creepy though? When she takes the string and oh. starts sawing her oh. head off. God in the attic. Oh my god, that, that was part bad. creep the Pete cr yeah, because he's trying to run away from his mom. Yeah, so then so he he goes downstairs, so we're getting ahead here, we're getting yes. excited. So after we, she we, flies, we did she skip like a lot. <laughs> she basically like flies out of the room and then he doesn't see her, and he's sitting there walking through the house. And he eventually finds his dad's dead, charred body yeah. in front of the fireplace. And in and the a, back. And again, in the back. Yes, this is where you comes can into barely see. Yes. You can barely see. Yes, she's and she's up waiting. on the ceiling in the corner in the dark yes. again. Yes, And then she starts chasing him. No, but then before that, this is the part that I'm getting okay. goosebumps right now. They creep the crap out of yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't see her right away. He hears like a creak and he turns to his left, our, the audience's right, and the kitchen door is open. 
and just barely standing there in the shadows is a completely naked member of the cult. Yes. Just smiling. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. It's so creepy. Yes. I didn't I forgot and that they came in like, that soon. Oh, so creepy. I forgot. Because yeah. I remember he's like when they he's, run into the attic. Well well, so then that happens. He turns and he sees that member of the cult completely naked standing there yes. smiling in the kitchen door. But naked. Barely. But then he hears another creak and turns and she runs. The mother is that's, now on the that's ground. I jumped at that part. Yeah. I jumped at that part. She runs at him and he takes off yes. and runs to the house. He goes up in the attic. Yeah. And the other part that was creepy is when she's slamming her head yes. on the door. I was like, that yes. was the part. I'm just like, I'm in my seat, like hands on my face, like elbows on my knees. Like, oh my God, yes. what is going on? Dude. And then after that part, it does like, it pans outside. Remember? So I'm. Go ahead, right? I'm glad you're bringing this up. It pans outside and surrounding, surrounding the entire house. That. Are you serious? I saw, I saw this movie twice. Yeah. The second time I saw it, you know, Zach Hess. Yes. I saw him the second time as we're walking out. And he goes, because we're talking about like the little things that yeah. you notice. He goes, did you notice when the camera panned out yes. when he goes up in the attic that the cult... It's is, surround, it surrounding the house and no, butt na- they're all butt naked like I know, I ass it. naked like nothing covering anything and they're surrounding the house ah. smiling smiling like you would smile like if your first child was I born know, it's just, like so it is, so it's, the, it literally the, is in a way the, like oh, dude they I were so they're like overjoyed but it's so creepy like there's, I think I was just so focused on the house I was like trying to look in the attic or something I didn't Look yeah. around the house. Yeah. I want to see this again. And then, and then so the, but then like the that. attic was creepy too, because oh like they're God. in the attic too. Well, so he comes up in the attic, and first he sees there's a fire. Isn't there a fire in the corner or something? There's light. Where there was light, because he comes up there and there's light. I don't remember that. Uh, wasn't that just moonlight? Because there's a window up there. I th- it was like darker light was there torches or there was candles maybe it was candles there was oh it was, can- there it was candles it was candles where everywhere. the body where the body oh, was yeah, 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 that's where right. the body was where his grandma's body's laying yeah. headless body yeah and now it's not behind that wall anymore i think it was out in front and her headless body is laying with candles all around it it's in the middle of that demonic symbol that's yes. like in blood i thought the body i don't think the body was there anymore i because i think the body was in the treehouse at this point right and it's just it, the candles was there nothing? Maybe. Was I, there nothing? Uh, I saw it. I saw it like a month and a half ago. I'm trying. To... Yeah, I don't. You might be right. Maybe the body wasn't there, but it was like the candles. Yes. There's blood. There's something written on the wall. Yes. And then you look up, and there's you, this. Oh, no, God. first you hear it. Wait, what do you, you hear? It first. Oh, the. the... <laughs> That's the, so. That was like I said earlier. One of my favorite yes. things about this movie is the sound design. Oh. Whoever did the sound design for this movie deserves an Academy Award because there are so many creepy sounds. It was just brilliant in that moment. He's looking, Peter's looking at all this shit in front of him that's just horrifying. All of a sudden you hear, and there's no music at this part. This is another part where the music was cut. He goes upstairs and it's quiet. And all of a sudden you hear, zh, zh, zh. Like it's, well it starts slow. It's like, zh, zh. And he turns around slowly and they don't show it at first. They show his face and like the horror on his face. Then it turns around. His mom is all of a sudden in the egg floating up above and yes. she has like a, fish line wrapped around her neck and she's sawing her own head off with the fish line slowly she's just got like this look on her face like zombie like yes. completely gone yes and it is just that part freaked me out too i thought that yeah. was creepy as hell no, I was super and then oh and then she starts they, getting faster, yeah, then and, starts, faster and faster and faster you can hear the blood you can hear the blood hitting the floor yes. that also was just it, it made my stomach curdle that yeah. scene made my stomach curdle and then he just jumps out the window because he oh because then he turns and he looks in the corner and all the cult is a bunch of them are standing in the corner naked, ass smiling, naked smiling and he oh. just jumps out the window yes and kills and, him, that, and kills himself yeah and kills himself yeah. and you see the light you see the light Go into going him. through the grass and yeah. hit his body and he's processed by Charlie I think Charlie and Payman or Charlie or whole, Charlie is Payman or I know that's so that's the only part I'm still confused on because they use Charlie's head and then they like crown. Charlie's decapitated but, head, and they talk to Peter. They address him as Charlie, the 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 woman's mm. friend. But then they say hail Payman to her. Yeah. So I'm is Charlie Payman? That's a good point. So then I wonder if Charlie is Payman, and maybe that's why she was so creepy that Payman was in Charlie's body. Yeah, possibly. I feel like I need but to see this but they needed but they needed a really. male host for him to be like what to he's supposed to be, be like power wise form, yeah. like his true powerful form yeah dude but they were all like so happy about it like it so was creepy smiling. and then the music then the music changes to this like bright 
uplifting <laughs> strings, and I'm like, it's so creepy. Super like, fucked oh, up. Like, oh, that's why I love this movie. Man. And then all of them in unison. Hail, Hail payment. payment. It's just like, oh. And it's, it's just, like... it's on uh, it's on Alex's face, but it's Charlie's just sitting there like blank face. Yeah. Hail, payment. Yeah. Oof. Oh, man. Yeah, super creepy. So, not so, not terrifying, but it so was a creepy you movie. Oh, dude, I thought it terrified me, man. So, I told a couple people this. Um, they had asked me, so I get asked what my favorite horror movies are all the time. And I always, The Shining to me is always, I have a lot, but The Shining has always been my favorite horror film of all time. Mm. After seeing this twice and you see it a third time, this is like right there for me with The Shining. There's so much I love it's about a gr- this movie. It's a great movie. You just don't think it's that scary? I just don't think it's terrifying. Yeah, I just don't think it's terrifying. Dude, I, it scared me. Because it, it takes a lot to scare me, and I was at home like both nights after I saw the movie like, in when I was in the dark and I like creeped out. Like, yeah. am I gonna see Tony Collette headless in the corner, <laughs> just, like <laughs> saw yeah, sawing her head off or smiling naked cult members? Oh yeah, that's creepy. Like, like what do you creepy. what do you do in that situation? Like I, I think that might be the creepiest part. Just like a, a cult of people surrounding your house butt naked oh. and just smiling, just staring at you. Like, what do you do? Like you wanna just go and like just kill them. I know. But then it's like I don't know. It's, it's just creepy. It's man. weird. It's I know, weird. It's really creepy. I, I did think it was it was scarier than the witch though. All right, so a good good transition here. So, yeah. Hereditary. Before we go to the witch, what would you rate it? Hereditary. Yeah, what would you rate it? Oh, I would say just because there were some parts where I laughed Either and out I shouldn't have laughed. Five out of ten. Whatever you. If I was going out of ten, I'd say like eight point five out of ten. Yeah. I I to me it was it was as close to a perfect movie as you can get. Really. Yeah. I want to see it again. I want to see it a third yeah. time, but it's like, I to me, there was nothing. As I watched, I understand. I, I understand your complaints. I feel yeah. like that's subjective, like because that's something I've been hearing and seeing is a lot of people thought some of those visuals at the end were comical. They were. I laughed. I, I laughed they were out loud. Right? Yeah. So that's something interesting too. Is I've read a lot of people have been pissed. They go to like I don't. I think I told you last time. I don't go to horror movies at night anymore especially opening thursday friday night saturday night never because people ruin it people are assholes yeah. i always go to mornings because people do stuff like that and like if that's your raw reaction that's fine but i also that's 100 i also raw heard reaction. people were being dicks in this movie going like oh people, yeah people were hell being, yeah everyone was doing that oh, in the theater man, did you go to like a pack show oh it was packed oh it was so packed dude i didn't here's the thing i didn't think it because it was it was it was out for a while at this point it was the only show of that it day packed? dude Packed. It's like the second or third highest grossing A twenty four film. Oh really? It made a lot of money, dude. Packed. It made like I think. I think it was because it was Tuesday though, and or what's the cheap? Tuesday's five five dollars. Yeah, so yeah. That's probably it was why. a nine. It was nine p.m. on a Tuesday. I really? thought I thought it was gonna be empty. Packed. Really? Packed because it's been out for a while. I yeah. saw it three weeks after you did. Yeah, I saw it op- not opening weekend, but opening week. So it come out that weekend before, and I saw it like. Sunday or Monday morning, and then I saw it like a Thursday or Friday morning. So it'd been out for a month. For, excuse me, when you saw it. Yeah, and when I saw it, and for it to be it packed, a lot of buzz. that's a lot. I yeah, mean, I just I just looked at my phone. It made ended up it was only made for ten million, really yeah. small budget. It made eighty million dollars. Yeah, which is a lot for an independent A twenty four film because yeah. usually these don't get a huge like they'll get a wide distribution but not huge. So it probably wasn't. It's not like the Infinity, Infinity War like prize in three thousand. 4,000 theaters in, in the United States. This one, you know, probably 1,000 theaters. Yeah. No, I mean, it was, it was like I said, it was a really good movie. That Dude, that would have pissed me off. If no. I was in a theater, people would have Oh, no, you would have hated that. I, hated I know, I went, to two, I went to two morning showings. The first time I went by myself, I was one of four or five. The second time when I went with a few friends, I was one of, with my three or four friends with me, we were one of, you know, there was like eight or nine total people. Yeah. And both times it was morning. No one made any noises. Uh, my Caroline calls me an old man all the time because yeah, I say stuff. Because yeah. you're so old. You're such a grouch. <laughs> I just like to enjoy the... Stuff like that takes... So when I go to see a movie or even when I watch a movie in general, I want to be completely immersed and lost in the experience and just enjoy the experience of the movie. That takes me out of it. It's jarring. You know, it ruins the experience. Because yeah. right? then I'm just thinking, okay, this asshole's over here clucking his oh, tongue that or was... they're laughing or, you know, it's yeah, like yeah. it's not funny, but... I understand it's a raw reaction. Like, yeah. I can see some people think it's comical. I thought it was creepy. Yeah. Though. Honestly, the two parts, only the two parts where I busted out laughing. Just was the, the, the floating. Both floating. 
the floating from the corner to where like oh. then they then they go to the bed and you can just kind of see the corner and then and she's she like crawls she's like across, crawling across and then the, the ceiling part when she floats headless yes yeah. like that those well, two I parts I I honestly laughed I was like I was like what it disturbed me to me it was disturbing yeah I can understand and I think it goes back to like we talked about in our last episode with horror nowadays people are just kind of. Yeah. People go to see so many horror movies, and they're kind of accustomed now to jump scares. That's what they think. People equate horror or scary with jump scares, which to me is dumb. Yeah. Because I could, I could literally come up to you. You're sitting here minding your own business, and yell in your ear, and you jump. Is 100%. that scare? Is that horror? No. It's scary because yeah. I startled you, but it's not. Horror. It's startling. It's startling. It's startling. It's not horrifying. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's not horrifying. Something so about the me, something about the floating crawling thing just ruins movies for me. Like Split. Did you see Split? Yeah. Okay, Split I thought was a creepy movie until like the end. When he turns into the beast? Yeah, and the beast is like crawling oh, spoilers, all over. Spoilers for oh, Split. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Spoilers for Split. And he's like crawling all over. I'm just like, dude, it was already scary enough as like creepy yeah. enough, like the multiple personalities and you don't know which one it's going to be and all that. Like you don't have to do like the crawling all over the place. Like Yeah, that was a little over the top. Exactly. Exactly. So I don't know. Yeah, to each his own. Exactly. So well, I'm glad you really liked. it. No, it was a really. Yeah, I would, I would see it again. Really, no, I, no I'm issues. Planning on seeing it again. Yeah. I'll probably be buying it when it comes out soon here. Um, all right. So let's go to the witch. So John, a couple months ago, had asked back. In, this is a while ago, like six months ago, when I saw you after your game, I'd asked you yeah. had asked me for some horror recommendations, yeah. and I had told him the witch. Um, I gave him a few. I think I told you like it follows and the Babadook, which you'd already seen a couple mm-hmm. other ones, but. Because I like independent, I'm more into independent horror films. So I told him The Witch, which is one of my, Hereditary was probably my favorite horror movie. Now it's probably one of my favorite horror movies of all time, but The Witch was right there. It's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I And I just watched it a week and a half, two weeks ago, yeah. in order to kind of be fresh on it. Um, so the reason I recommended The Witch, it's also an A24 film, same distribution studio. So they pick up these in, low budget independent horror films. Or films in general, um, but it's also similar, if not the same as Hereditary, in the fact that it starts with a family tragedy. The film is a focus about a family tragedy before turning to the supernatural. This is a much shorter film. Hereditary is over two hours. It's yeah. kind of long. The Witch is only like an hour thirty, or maybe even less. It's quick, so it ha- it's a much quicker pace in terms of the tragedy to the supernatural. It's yeah. not as drawn out as Hereditary. Um, what do you, well, let me so let me give a summary really quick. So the witch, it, it takes place in Puritan New England, so 1600s, um, and you the movie starts right away with this big Puritan family, a family of seven. They have four kids: the twins, the, the daughter, twins, the son, yeah. and a fifth on the way. So it's a family of six, soon to be seven, and they are being emancipated. Is that the term? Ostracized. Ostracized? Yeah. Emancipates from your family. Ostracized yeah. from their town. They don't really ever go into detail. They mention that it's the, it's the father's sinful pride. He has something to do with he, his religion. He believed, yeah, he believed in, uh, he like worshipped in a different way. Than and, the yeah. rest, yeah. You yeah. know, strict Puritan yeah. America. But, but he was like even more strict than they were. Yeah. And he would call them out on it. And which they is were just, prideful. But, yeah. Which that's what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sinful pride. Exactly. Just being so prideful. Like, right. So they excommunicate them, ostracize yes. them, whatever, their entire family from the community, and the movie starts with them on a, this is another movie that's creepy music, I mean, right away the music's creepy, and it has them on their huge horse-drawn carriage with all their belongings going into the woods. They're leaving, they've been shut out of this community, and they're going to the woods. And so the movie starts with them building a new life for themselves, they're, you know, I think at one point they say it's like a day's ride or more from that community, so they're out there by themselves, they build a house and a farm and their own life for themselves. And so spoilers again for The Witch. The movie almost immediately after they're settled starts with their youngest son. Uh, who's So when they leave the community, the mother is pregnant with their youngest son. And the next scene, um, their daughter, who's their oldest kid, she's watching the baby. And she's playing peekaboo. I yes, love this scene. The creepy. It's a creepy scene. It is scene. creepy. So she's sitting there playing peekaboo. With their um, the youngest son, I'm trying to remember the youngest son, Samuel. The baby's name is Samuel. 
So she's sitting there. The young, the daughter's name is Thomason, which is a very weird name. It sounds very old American. <laughs> uh, Thomason's the daughter's name. She's playing peekaboo, and the camera is on her face, and it switches back and forth. So peekaboo with the with the daughter, and then it switches to the baby. The baby starts laughing. And they do this about three or four times, and then all of a sudden she goes peekaboo, and the baby's gone. And you, the camera looks up with her. It's like a point of view. And, Slowly, and, you see. And like, just to like clear it up, though, like we're not talking like three years old could like crawl or walk away no. we're talking infant. like infant. infant like like just born like but less like, than a year like, maybe a year at the most like yeah maybe yeah maybe a, so like... it didn't crawl away <laughs> and the camera pans up and you see the grass and you hear rustling into the woods and there's and you don't you don't see anything you no, just see you the see grass nothing. kind of moving it and you see the brush rustle so whatever grabbed it it was like boom like quick grabbed it gone and she and you didn't even hear it until it was gone and she looks up and the baby's gone. So this is how the movie starts. And so the movie starts with a family tragedy, kind of like Hereditary. You know, it's, and once again, it's the youngest kid in the family. Mm-hmm. And just like Hereditary, we never really touched on it, but the, the mother was angry. You know, there's a part of the movie where she's angry at her son. Well, it's the same thing here in The Witch. The mother is angry. It's like this, this bottled up anger. Like it won't come out. It's like passive aggressive. Like it's under the surface. Yeah. She's furious with Tomlinson. But I know it's I know form, it's not your fault, but, but it's, it's your, your fault. fault. Yeah, yeah, kind of thing. And she's grieving, you know, the mother's <laughs> crying and they're praying and crying and praying and crying for days and they go out and search for the baby and you know it's well, so then the next scene after the baby's stolen, I guess this movie goes supernatural pretty quick. Because yeah. then I forgot the next scene, the baby's taken and they show I can't oh. remember there's a word for it. They show the witch performing a... I'll get it pretty quick here. They're showing the witch perform a ritual, which involves her... Ki- they don't show it on screen. They don't show her kill the baby. Yeah, but pretty the, much it did. cuts. It shows her... Oh, and the witch is so gross looking. Yeah. She's this old, nasty hag. It she, reminded me of um, Melisandre. From Game of Thrones without oh, the necklace. Yeah, when she's t- old like again. Like the old hag, yeah, without the... With but I think she, in The Witch, this woman's even creepier. Because she's got this hut in the woods. And she's like... Yeah. It's like a witch. Like what you would dream Puritan America thinks witches are. That's she, it. Yeah, she's in the woods with her... <laughs> that's all of her creepy, That's what Salem was all about. Yeah, like a woman same, like that. Yeah, that. Like, yeah. Um, so they show the baby on a stump. Yeah. And it's all lit with just uh, firelight and candlelight. It's creepy. It's like the lights flickering on it. And she's like feeling the baby. And all of a sudden she pulls a knife and, this, and the frame cuts. And then the next scene is her with a big bowl. And you can tell she had mashed the yes. baby up. Yes. It's like it's you can see it's just all it is is red. And she's got, a, I don't know what she would call it, but a tool just to mash it up. Yeah. And then the next scene, she's in the moonlight. You're just rubbing it on rubbing herself. Rubbing it. It was so gross. Oh, she's like it rubbing it on herself. It was. And so then it goes crazy. back to the family. Yes. So we don't know. It's, it, you know, it's dramatic irony. Yeah. But it makes right? it makes where, we, her, where the audience knows, but they don't know mm-hmm. what's happened. Uh, and it makes her youthful. I think so, yeah, right? Sacrificing beautiful. children to Satan yeah. for witches yeah. is what and putting it on herself keeps like the, them the, immortal. Yes, yes, because she she turns into like a beautiful like woman. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she does. Yeah. So, um, as the movie goes on, though, the family isn't really aware. They continue, and that's so. When I had originally told you about this movie, that's what I loved about it, is it's the family kind of tears itself apart before the cra- you know, the crazy ending. Yeah, it's really the family cool. blaming each other because you they they blame the twins, they blame the daughter. The twins are. Creepy, creepy the whole time too. and the song that they always sing what is the yeah. song they sing about black so black philip black philip yes i know but... so the goat so you find out you don't the goat is creepy throughout the whole movie because yes. it's i don't know i know it's just a goat like it's a real goat that they're yeah. filming some of the shots that they do with the goat creepy. it's just like it's like just it's like eyes, something something's off like the way it's pant there's a scene yes. where they have it on his face it's just panting it's yeah. just a creepy looking Yes. Um, and the kids are like worshiping this goat they the whole to it. Yes, it's so they go creepy. They the bar and they talk to it and they whisper it. And what you find out at the end of the movie is the goat is Satan. And the, and the goat actually t- was talking back to the twins. Like, but you don't hear it till the end of the yeah, movie. Yeah, you don't know the until the reveal. end. So, yeah, we just. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, so basically what this movie leads up to, you know, you have, you have this family tragedy. They lose their son. 
their youngest son, the baby. And then it progressed. This it's even worse than Hereditary because they end up losing everybody. I mean, the family's destroyed. Almost by everybody. Almost everybody. <laughs> Almost. So after the the baby is destroyed or is gone. The, the son, the oldest son, and the father want to go into the woods. And They're the, gonna oldest, the oldest son's like 12. Yeah, this is a young family. Yeah. Thomason's 13, 14. Or no, 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 she's older, 15, oh, 16. Oh, she has to be older. The actress, I think she's 16. Who, the actress who plays her is like easily in her 20s. Not at the time. I think she's 20, 21 now. Because it's oh, the she? same girl who was in Split. Anya Taylor, it is. Anya yes. Taylor-Joy. Yes. Yeah. I think she was 16 or 17. Oh, was she? And then, she did a great job. Oh, she's excellent. Yeah, she's actress. really good. And then the boy, yeah, it was like twelve or thirteen. Yeah. And then the twins, I think, are like six, seven, probably. Yeah. Would you say? Yeah. And then they had the one-year-old baby. Um. So then, what happens with the uh, the father and the oldest son? You know, they go out in the woods and they're trying to like cheer their mother up by trying to find some apples, and they're trying to go hunt. Or well, the son well, tells her they're trying to find yeah. apples, but they really think they're going out hunting and checking their traps. Yeah. And so then later on, that you know, they come back, and then later on, the next day, the son wants to go by himself and try and get the trash because he's worried because his mom and his dad now are fighting because there's some, there's a lot of tension because of the youngest son being gone, and then there's a cup, a silver cup that the mother had from her mother. Yeah, it was like passed down. Yeah, passed down, the and then she's all upset that it's missing. You find out the father had sold it for, uh, excuse me, for some equipment or goods or whatever. So the son just wants to try and cheer his mother up, you know, catch some game, and I think maybe, you know, find something nice for her. Well, and he takes his sister, the oldest daughter, who lost Samuel. You know, they go out, and uh, they, that creepy rabbit, dude. How about, so then they go in the woods, and they see a, a rabbit or a hare or whatever, and he goes to try and shoot it. Don't you think there's something demonic or oh, creepy 100%. about the rabbit? 100%. One hundred percent. I feel like it's got to be one of the the minions, minions of the yeah. witch or something. Oh, one hundred percent. Because they, it's not a thing it, like it, the doesn't witch. It, the doesn't witch it, it ends up ends up like leading him to her hut, and he chases yes, the rabbit exactly. all the way to the witch's exactly. hut. Exactly, and then she. That's okay. That's another creepy. Scene that that too. is creepy. But another thing, like that doesn't have to do with the movie, but it also does at the same time. Like I thought it was interesting that they would let, and I know they've done it before. Like they did it in like a uh, interview interview with the vampire. Like, like like an adult kiss a kid, yeah, on the lips because this know, woman just kisses the boy. It's quick because the it camera is. cuts. It is, but she it, comes in yeah. slowly and and it looks well. Do we see their lips? Yeah, I thought his head kind of no. Turned. I swear, I, I swear, I thought they did. I swear yeah, I, I wonder. I feel like to do that because he's under age, they'd probably have to have the parents yeah parental set consent yeah and get consent from the yeah. parents. Yeah. They have to. do It's just that. interesting, like because now, like. I don't know. I just feel like there's so much stuff going on now. Like three, this is 2015. Yeah, this exactly. Years ago. But I guess in the Me Too movement and all that stuff, within three years, a lot can happen. Dude, it's crazy how much... Because yeah. I don't. I just don't know if it flies the same. And then, like... I mean, it's, that's all... They need two things. The parents have to be on set, because I've, I've read about it before, and the parents have to get consent. Mm. Two other times I can think about off the top of my head was American Beauty. Mm, yep. The girl shows her breasts in the film, and she was only 16 or 17. Was she really only yes, 16 or 17? She was 18. Oh. So the parents had to give consent, and they have to be on set. Another one is from Superbad. The kid who played, uh, is it Chris? What's the name of the actor who plays McLovin? Oh, I don't know. Christopher Mintz Plasse. Is that, that his idea. name? Whatever. I, I think no that idea. might be his name. Um, he was 17. He was the youngest in the cast. Yeah. And they have that scene where he tries to hook up with the girl at the party. Yeah. They, there was a lot of things they had to do to not get in trouble for that. Weird. Yeah. Crazy. They have a lot of... They st- I mean, even... You know, that was 10 years ago. Yeah. American Beauty was 99, 2000. I mean, they... You know, there's strict laws on that. But you're right. I wonder, you know, as we move forward, how that might change. But, yeah. but yeah, going back to The Witch. So, that rat... They see that rabbit and leads... Leads it to her... Her hut. The witch's hut. And she comes out and she's young and beautiful. And she's... She's in, like... I, that's one of the things I loved about this movie was the set and the costumes, the costume design. Yeah. Like she, how she's dressed, it doesn't look like a fairy tale witch. Like it looks like no, she's dressed, a creepy Puritan yeah, witch. She's, dressed, she's, she's, she's dressed nice. All black and she's got yeah. the hat, but it's like, it's not a pointed hat. No. I don't think. No, I don't think it is either. And that's why, or was it a, a hood? Oh, it was a hood. I think it was a hood. It was she a hood. A it, was it was a hood. hood. It was a hood. It was just. Oh, she, because she's beautiful, but you know her. 
her intent, and she's I mean, creepy. she literally chopped up your baby brother like oh, a week ago and, and rubbed it all and over rubbed him all over yourself oh to God. look the way she did. Yeah, so creepy. And then kissed you, which ended up driving him insane. <sighs> that's so that that's a scene. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if she. I think it has to be related. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm like trying to think of what she did to him, because you don't really know. So then, the, when she kissed him, the scene cuts, and it goes yeah. back. It goes back to Thomason passed out because she had fallen off the horse when mm. the rabbit ran away. And she hit her head, and her mom and her dad are running through the wood. You know, they're yelling, trying to find him. They find Thomason, and it's like a day later. I think it's that very night because they're worried about um, what's the brother's name? If I can remember his name, so the brother. Has gone, Caleb. The brother Caleb's gone missing, and that very night she goes outside, and her brother is in the rain, completely naked, standing. He's delirious. Yeah. You know. So, and I don't know. They don't really ever tell you what happened or what's wrong with him. He's no. He's just but, sick I mean, for days, and then he pukes up an apple, screams, screams, and professes his love for God and some. I think a Bible verse. And then he blames Thomason. Did he? Yeah. What did he say? What did I he swear, say? doesn't he blame her? Doesn't he say that she's a witch, or something? The the twins do. No, I swear, Tom. I swear the, the during boy, his rambling. Yeah, he I did? think I swear he does. I thought he. Mm, did I miss that? Yeah, I swear. Uh, I swear, I thought he did. Now I want to watch it again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I, I. I guess I don't remember that part. Yeah, I could be wrong, but I swear I thought that he did, because then that's when like. They were like, okay, like we got to get to the bottom of this, and the dad like locks them all up, and yeah, he locks all. So how about that? So this one, like I said, this is a quick movie. Yeah. So then we're already in the part where after, the, so he, you know, he pukes up the apple, yell, yells a bunch of crazy stuff, and dies, falls over and dies. And then the father, the twins, are blaming Thomason. Thomason's blaming the twins because they whispered a black Philip, and he just locks them all in the shed with the goat. Yes. And oh. then how about when they wake up, and the witch. Is completely naked and she's her old nasty looking self. Yeah. And she's eating the the white goat, the other goat. Yeah. Super creepy. And then she stuff. laughs. Oh, she turns and she's got blood. Yeah. Like, ah. Yeah. Oh. And the kids all scream and then it cuts and they wake they end up, they wake up in the morning and everything's destroyed. Yes. The twins are gone and it's just Black Phillip and Thomason's passed out in the yard. Yeah. Exactly. How about that? That's one of my favorite parts of the movie is that whole ending sequence. Dude, yeah. So up to that point, did you you didn't think did you so you didn't think the movie was scary at all? Not or really. Just creepy. No, I thought it was creepy. I didn't think it was scary. I guess I guess rewatching it, I guess too hereditary to me is terrifying. I think the witch is more like unsettling. It's just got this really disturbing. There was like a when it came out, there was a really good quote from a critic. I don't remember what publication who says watching the witch. It feels like you're watching something you shouldn't be seeing. Mm, yeah, you told me you sent that to yeah, me. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Like, we're witnessing something that we shouldn't be seeing. Yeah. I it, love that quote because yeah. after we, I've seen it several times, I do, every time I watch them, like, it's just, it's kind of unsettling. It's just yeah. really disturbing. Yeah. It just depends on, like, how deeply you want to think about a movie. So if you start yeah. to compare it to your own life and think, like, okay, what if my brothers and sisters and my mom and dad, people who I trust so much, and I have this, I think about them in this certain way, what if they weren't what I thought they were like that's, at all? And that's where, to me, that's where like, the true horror lies in the movies. Yeah. The family, because of what this witch is doing, unseen, she's doing all this stuff unseen to the parents. The parents never know. So at the end of the movie, the parents are both dead. And they, yeah. if you think about it, they never knew. At the end, they think their daughter is the witch. Yeah. But she's not. No. You know? And Black Phillip kills the dad. Yeah. Yeah, so Which is he another. wakes up in the morning, everything, yeah. he starts, everything's he, destroyed. He goes to attack Tomlinson, because he's like, oh, you're the only one left? Like, I know it was you. That right? was like the only jump scare in the movie. Dude. It's like, all of a sudden, it comes off yes. frame and just and, nails and, Yes, he gets wrecked. Right he gets wrecked by Black Phillip, because he, he's going for her. Yeah. And Black Phillip's like, nope. And just freaking literally kills the dude. Like I know. Oh, man. And then I saw, I wonder, rewatch it, I wonder <clears> if the witch took the twins. See, that's what I'm wondering too. Like, and use are, them as more <laughs> lotion. Lotion. Ugh, no, it's like that episode. Lotion. It's like the episode Youth of lotion. Rick and Morty when they're in the post-apocalyptic version of Earth, yeah. where it's like, um, it's like Mad, uh, Max. Mad Max, like and Mad he's Max. like, he's like, oh, your blood will be my lotion. <laughs> <laughs> like the dude is chasing oh, him. God, like, dude, that's that's, that's literally what it is. Like, oh, they, they use the kids' Ooh. blood and flesh Ooh. as lotion. I know that's so gross and creepy. <laughs> 
Uh, That's where the scary part comes from for me. Dude. Oh. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> I don't know. But yeah, and then uh, the ending, though, when she... So then she ends up... Kill, her mother, you know, thinks that she's the witch. Because Black Phillip kills kills uh, the father. Mm-hmm. And the mother's convinced... The twins are gone. The mother's convinced it's her. Because she's the only one left. Man. If she... You, so facto, who wouldn't if, think that? Yeah, like, I, I would think this. that too. If you're fine, it must be you. Yeah, but it wasn't. No. How about how about right before that scene, or is it a couple scenes earlier where the mother thinks she has a dream where she thinks Caleb is back and he's holding Samuel mm-hmm. and she, he gives her Samuel and she's breastfeeding Samuel, and then it like the camera zooms out and she's laughing it's a crow yes she's pecking oh at her my breasts. god that and was it that was real was... though because she wakes up yes. in the morning, there's blood all yes. the shirt that's unsettling oh my god and she's like so, so happy and it's just a crow like, tearing out her nipple she's got her head tilted back and she's like laughing yes it's like she's like, oh. ha, ha, like a like a really quiet laugh it was yeah. just it's that's like some of the stuff in the movie just, yeah oh, it's so creepy yeah, but it was almost like a oh like a laugh like oh i'm so happy like that like my baby's back and it's a crow pecking, pecking her my nipple breast. oh like, my gosh oh. i know it's creepy yes and then like so then after after the mom dies and she goes and she just doesn't know which what we should mention the uh, thomason kills her mom yeah so because yeah. her mom started trying she or her mom to. starts to the try mom tried to kill her self-defense yeah, yeah yeah but then she's she takes it like a hatchet and it's like whacking her in the head with it yes and then she literally okay so instead of like going back to the puritan village which is like less than a day away which i mean if she could make her way back she goes she goes back to where black philip is and starts to like well, she like, just gives herself to black know, philip that's the other thing. every time i watch this movie that's the only the only part of the movie i question is her her flipping it seems it's it's like that i know i wonder if she just feels like she has nothing, nothing else. left her entire family's dead and gone but she's m- she was you know kicked out of the village and she's over a day like, away she's like a she's like a, a pretty young woman like you she would totally be able to go back into the village by herself they would totally pity her because she's a woman especially and you know they need women because they I need wonder to have more if kids she, it was just curiosity because it, well, it is it's curiosity because she goes into the barn yeah and she starts like she first wants to know do you really talk right she says um if you know they talk in old english like if thou has something to say to me speak Phil- black philip or something yeah. like that you know? I, I swear doesn't she like give herself to black philip first well she's trying to get him to talk and then she I would love to. to I would love to hear the, what she says exactly. I know. I'm trying to remember how the conversation exactly went. Because Black Phillips is something like, "Wouldst thou like?" Yeah. Because, uh, it, but it's 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 creepier than that because he doesn't say anything for a while, so you just think she's losing her mind. And she starts it's like tilts her head down. She's like, gonna leave, and then like, all of a sudden he speaks. Yes. Oh my and god. That part was that yeah. part caught me off guard. Well, I was they like, never show the the goat at this moment. They don't show the goat. Yeah, yeah. You can't see him. You just hear him off screen, yeah. and talking. you know it's the goat. And, well, and the voice is creepy. As Super hell. It's creepy. Really creepy voice. But it's I, the exchange is something along and the lines of she asks like what he has to offer. Yeah. And then he says something He's like, like "What's thou like riches, riches, and... long life, or something?" Yeah, like all like see the world. Ask would you yes, like, thou like yes, to see the yes. world? Yes, and she's like, she like gives herself to Black Philip completely. Signs his book. Yeah. Then remember, then Black Philip appears in a human form yeah. behind her. Remember? Wait, does he? Yes. And then leads Do you her, not notice and, the and, human form? And then leads her into the woods. But as a goat, as she's signing his book, right before she does, a man comes into frame it's never focused wait i don't really? i don't think i remember that i don't know why yeah, a man comes into frame and i always find it kind of weird because he almost looks like a pirate he's yeah. dressed in like he <laughs> does he's got like a month i think he has like a mustache he's uh, dressed in this black i should try to pull it up on my phone he's dressed in like this black garment he's got like a big hat but yeah, it's right behind it he kind of it's real quick he comes over one shoulder and then over the other and then he kind of goes off frame and then turns into a goat again I think so, because yeah. it's like doesn't she say she doesn't know how to write or something? He goes, "I'll guide your hand." Maybe. I think because she was wasn't sure how to sign his book, but then she just strips naked and he leads her into the forest. And yeah, she goes to the coven, and then they all start floating and laughing. Why do they have to fucking float? Because it's a coven. 
Why do they it's have to coven. fucking float? Why? Stop the floating they gotta shit. They got to get their broom and sail away. Dude, there's no broom. They just started floating. Because witches fly. All, all naked. They're just like giggling and floating. It's creepy. And that's how it ends. It's so creepy. In the woods, surrounding a bonfire. Well, it all ends, women. But it ends on her. Because she's, even up to this point, Thomason's unsure what's going on. You know, she's The whole time she's got this look of like, she's anxious. She doesn't know what's going on. But she's just kind of going along with it. Because she has, it's like she feels like she's curious. has nothing else to lose. And then you see her turn. Yeah. Like, as she's floating, she's got the fire, the shadows going off of her. And she starts, she's got blood on her still from her mom. When she killed her mom, she's still got blood on yeah. her. And she, like, starts to smile. And she starts laughing as she's floating. Super creepy. Oh, no, it was, it was definitely a creepy movie. You liked it, though? No, I thought it was a good movie. Yeah. yeah. I just, oh, and I thought it would pair good with Hereditary. It kind of conveniently, because I was like, you got to see this, man. Yeah. And it paired conveniently with Hereditary. No, it does. Because, you know, you got two family tragedies, and obviously one goes supernatural pretty much from the beginning with the witch, whereas Hereditary takes a lot more time to build that up. Yeah. But I loved it. Yeah. It no, great. they were both good movies. They really were. What would you rate The Witch? Oof. If I gave, if I gave Hereditary eight and a half, The Witch would have to be seven. Seven? Yeah, seven I'm more. I'm not perfect on The Witch. I'm more like a nine. Yeah. That's, do, that's high. I love it. I love that's it. high. I love I love. The, so, I'm, and I don't, you know, when I watch a horror movie, I don't just take into account whether it scared me. See? I'm watching the direction, I'm watching the camera work, I'm, watching, I'm listening to the music, the editing, yeah. the sound, you know, all that stuff. Like, trying to take it all in. Do I appreciate is it what they're doing from every aspect, and do I think it's all done well? Yeah, see, and you understand that on a better level than I do. I'm just, you know. You, you're I'm just like, a layman. Uh, yeah, it's exactly, <laughs> literally. Don't cut yeah. yourself so, short. So, man. I'm just, yeah, no, but like. No, I mean, I, I think they're both good movies. I, I would definitely watch either one again. I just, when I watch a scary movie, I guess I'm, it, I just, I want to be, I want to be terrified. And I, I do too. And I'm just very rarely terrified. I, I can't think of a movie. I know, yet. it's hard. I know you said when we talked the last one, Paranormal Activity. Dude, for some reason, the first time I saw Paranormal Activity, just because I convinced myself in my head that it was real. Like, I literally convinced myself that it was real. And it creeped me out. Well, and you always, and that's one where, you know, you always hear supernatural stories and people with their ghost or supernatural experiences yeah and that might be a good one to talk about at some point i don't know no it was a good one well if you're on if you're on my next one it's it'll be your turn to recommend oh we could we could go for um <laughs> revolutionary figure type movies v for vendetta oh man I know, we were just talking about I, I Before honestly, we started, we were just talking about V for Vendetta. Love that movie. Haven't watched it in a while. Love we'll it. We'll have to set something up if we can do another one soon here. Uh, so then I'll, let's, if you have anything else, anything else you want to say about Hereditary or The Witch? No, I'm good. Glad you liked them both. Uh, let's go real quick then. So like last time, do you have any, was this the first movie, was Hereditary the first movie you had seen since Infinity War in theaters? Or did you um, see something in between? Deadpool 2. Oh, you did? Oh, that's right. I saw it with you. We yeah. did see it. So it was yeah. Infinity War, Deadpool 2, Hereditary. Yep. Hereditary is the last one I saw in theaters, too. Really? I've, had, I've been busy. I haven't had time. Haven't There's like anything. six movies right now out that I want to see. There's a whole bunch. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen that. I'm thinking about yeah. trying tomorrow's $5 Tuesday. <laughs> try, try to take advantage. Maybe see one early in the morning let's, and late at let's night. Get, let's catch a movie. I know, with football in between. Here. What are you trying to see? I want to go see... Um, I still haven't seen Ant-Man and the Wasp. Okay, I haven't seen it. I was thinking either. about going to see oh, that so in the morning. It, yeah. And I really want to see Sorry Not to Bother You. Yeah, I haven't even heard of it. So I haven't really looked much into it. I just watched, caught some trailers. Cause I I hate reading a lot about movies that are like original, because then I feel like either the trailer will give it away or yeah. I'll read something will give it away. I like just going and not knowing much. But I saw a little bit of a couple trailers. I thought, sorry not to bother you, looked really good. Hmm. I want to see Bo Burnham's directorial debut, another A twenty four film, Eighth Grade. Is it a comedy? Uh, yeah, it's a coming of age yeah. movie. Because Bo Burnham's a comedian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They started on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, did when he? We, yeah, like when we were in middle school. Oh, man, I've, guy, I've, I've seen his stuff on Netflix. Is yeah, he really? He's 27. That's yeah. it. He's got two. He had a he had a Comedy Central special at 18 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, the dude got started on YouTube like at 15 or 16. Yeah. It was like when we were in middle school. He was huge. He had that I'm Bo, yo. Remember that song? No. He did the rapping with the no. comedy. That guy's no. a genius. I, yeah. But then the other one, uh, I still haven't seen the Mr. Rogers documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor. No, I haven't seen it either. I really want to see that. Yeah. And Blind Spotting. That was another one. It was a crime movie that just came out that's supposed to be really good. Oh, oh and then the new Mission Impossible. Uh, I had, So I had never <laughs> seen a Mission Impossible movie until the last couple of weeks. I watched all of them, you like them in the last couple of weeks. One's okay. 
Two is one of the worst movies I've seen in a while. Three was a little bit better than one. And then four, like everyone always says it gets better. Four and five were awesome. Yeah. I just watched Rogue Nation yesterday afternoon uh, or evening. It was really good. It's like, um, I hate them all, but and I've seen them all, sadly. Fast and the Furious. I have not seen a single Fast and Furious. Don't ever watch them. Really? They're, they're horrible. But the, the first few yeah, are yeah. atrociously bad. Like how they continued on. And it, it gets better. But the first ones are just, so bad. Money. Oh my gosh! Money. Like, it blows my mind that people go to the, the acting. Oh, it's comical. You gotta, but you gotta think about the average moviegoer. The average moviegoer, you know, just wants to go to the theater, just want to be entertained. They don't want to think about it. They just want to go and laugh and be entertained and go home. Not even think about it. Not like Hereditary and The Witch, where you sit here and we are at an hour and twenty minutes talking that, that's about, about that's those movies. Yeah. So we'll finish up here real quick. Do you have any film recommendations? Tell anyone you want to see. Maybe you not wa- got a chance to watch any movies. Either. I haven't watched any. I, I haven't no, watched nothing no. old either. Mm, no, that's the thing. I'm such a TV show guy. I'm yeah. such a series guy. So, but you'd recommend The Witch and Hereditary? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would recommend. So, from my, I haven't watched many. I haven't got a chance to watch a lot of movies either lately. Other than I got a guy into the Mission Impossible films. I'd recommend anyone who hasn't seen check them out. Yeah. I thought. I think you can skip one through three. I would say definitely check out Girls Protocol and Rogue Nation. I liked both of them quite a bit. I thought they were both pretty good. Mm. This new one, Mission Impossible Fallout, people are hailing as the best action movie, one of the best action movies ever made. They're comparing it with Mad Max Fury Road. That good? Yeah, with the stunts and the camera work, like jaw-dropping stunts and action. So maybe we can go see it this week if you're interested. Hey. And I'm telling, like, you don't need to see the other ones. Yeah. Like each no, I've one, seen a couple of them. Oh, you have. Yeah, like yeah, each yeah. one I've watched, they're like it's like James Bond to me. Yeah. Like each James Bond, you know, like the Daniel Craig films. Like maybe there's some connections, but you don't need to see yeah. them all in order. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You can watch them individually. Quickly, Daniel Craig is the best James Bond in my mind. I really think I, he is. Yeah. Dude, he. For me, it's Craig then Sean Connery. I mean, you have to give Sean Connery just because he was like the, the original. original. But, like, Dan- he does such a good job. He does. He does. We can talk about that another time, though, because we were pushing an hour and 20. Yeah, that's so a we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and end this thing. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, please join us next time, whether it's John or someone else. Hopefully, John will be back. It'll probably be me. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some great conversations. I love it. All right, well, thanks, John, for joining me today. Hope to have you on again real soon. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Hope to have you back for the next episode. Go out and watch some movies.